So welcome to our Zoom event, um, Evidence-Based Nutrition Cancer Prevention Recommendations. I know that's a mouthful, but um, it was a topic of interest for so many, so we're thrilled that you're able to join us. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Sesanoff, and I'll be one of your hosts this afternoon. Uh, my colleague, Jessica, you probably saw her uh, typing in the chat already. She'll be your chat host today. So be sure to, if you have any questions as you're hearing Crystal present the content today, um, just be sure you type those in and we'll be setting aside some time at the end of the presentation um, for a special Q&A session. So um, type, get, get those questions going throughout the presentation and um, we'll, we'll be sure to set aside some time for those. Um, and so let's go ahead and introduce our featured speaker. So I'm pleased to introduce you to our expert guest, Crystal Villa. And Crystal is our clinical nutrition supervisor at Memorial Care Orange Coast Medical Center. And she's been a registered dietitian for 11 years. So we have a good expert. Uh, we are so excited to tap into her expertise today. Um, she received her bachelor's degree in nutrition and food science at California State University, San Bernardino, and she specializes in critical care, food sensitivities, and functional nutrition. So Crystal has been a part of the Orange Coast Medical Center family for about six years now, and in her free time, she enjoys high-intensity workouts, painting, reading, and playing the harp. So welcome, Crystal, and we're very excited for your presentation today. Well, hello, everybody. I just want to first off thank everybody for joining me today. I am very excited to share with you all some findings and help give you some tips and recommendations for your personal cancer prevention journey, as we all probably have had a personal experience knowing somebody or having cancer ourselves. Um, so I'm very happy to be sharing this information with you today. So today we are going to discuss some recommendations for health and lifestyle changes, providing techniques to incorporate for weight management and being physically active, and explaining, explaining uh, current evidence-based research recommendations and behavioral modifications of specific cancer types. And so for current evidence-based research, if there's a question that comes up, um, I just want to be mindful of their um, some specific information that wasn't covered. Um, there may have not been enough convincing or strong evidence to incorporate that topic in this uh, presentation. So just be mindful. Okay, so facts and figures from the American Cancer Society. Uh, cancer is the second leading cause of death in the, new, the US. So this slide uh, presents the number of new cancers projected for the year in the US. Uh, in this presentation, uh, the recommendations I'm going to be covering are for the top four cancers. Uh, we'd be here for quite a while if I was to cover um, all cancer um, recommendations. So I'm going to focus on the top ones um, during this presentation. A significant amount of cancers are presentable, uh, preventable by eating a healthy diet, being physically active, and keeping a healthy weight, as I mentioned um, in the objective. So we're going to go over um, in a nutshell real quick, and a lot of um, these will be explained in other slides in more detail. So focus making um, healthy eating choices and healthy lifestyle changes. So maybe not think of these things as a diet. It's just what can I do to make these um, habits in my life as this is just my new lifestyle, okay? Um, focus um, um, not only to help cancer prevention, but a lot of what I'm going to mention today helps with other chronic diseases and increasing energy and self-esteem and personal um, control, which starts with behavior modification and adopting as a lifestyle. Um, start step by step uh, so it's not overwhelming and be realistic with um, your goals so that you have long-term success. First one is increasing dietary fiber. Fiber can help reduce inflammation and insulin resistance for cancer prevention, uh, but start slowly um, so you avoid any um, GI discomfort. Uh, you want to increase to a goal of 25 grams a day for women and 38 grams uh, a day for men. And what is dietary fiber? It's whole grains, it's beans, um, basically anything that has a like casing or shell, uh, like brown rice, uh, vegetables, fruits, especially fruits with the skins, 
And if you're shopping, look at the nutrition label. If you see something that at least has three grams of fiber, that's a good source. Anything above that would be a great source. So start really looking at your nutrition labels to ensure that it does have some dietary fiber so that you can uh, reach your daily goal. Uh, increasing fruits and vegetables uh, may help with obesity-related cancers, which I will cover in a, another slide. They're naturally low in fat, sodium, and calories. And they're a great source of essential nutrients and fiber. The fruits and vegetables can help reduce a, quite a bit of, of cancers, but also chronic uh, diseases like heart disease. Increasing whole grains and nuts. We're going to go over whole grains in a little bit more detail uh, in a later slide. Uh, last one, reducing uh, diets high in sweets, refined grains, sugar-sweetened beverages, alcohol, and red and processed meats. So if these specifically ones, we will go into more detail in uh, later slides as well, because they're pretty important. Okay, so um, to continue on, increasing legumes, uh, what is considered a, a legume, beans, peas, and lentils, they help um, to lower risk as well as to provide nutrients and phytochemicals, uh, provide resistant starch, which is starch that doesn't want to get digested. So it's pretty similar to fiber. Flavonoids, which is a phytochemical that may have anti-cancer effects. They're rich in protein, complex carbohydrates and fibers. They help with sati satiety. And what that means is they help you feel full um, and, and stay full. So you're eating a little bit less. They help with glucose levels and overall weight management. <laughs> So they play a good role in cancer prevention and helping reduce risks, also like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and obesity. Uh, so make, make some bean dips with vegetables or a pot of vegetable chili. Add legumes um, as a budget-friendly protein and use as a meal, a meal filler, like add to soups, entrees, and salad. Uh, adding omega-3 options during the week. Uh, it's an anti-inflammatory, which helps with the cancer prevention. So sardines, mackerel, herring, albacore, tuna, algae, flax seeds, walnuts, canola oil, soybeans, and chia seeds. And the Heart American Heart Association does recommend at least eight ounces or two servings of fish each week. So lifestyle changes. These are probably the more difficult areas to implement as daily habits. So we will spend more time on these topics in later um, slides, which is the weight reduction, um, daily physically, physical activity, and avoiding alcohol. Okay, so as I said, one of the recommendations is really adding in whole grains. So let's start by defining what a whole grain is. And I like this slide because it goes over um, what the whole kernel looks like and to, to have the complete kernel that's considered a whole grain so you've got the brand which is the outer shell that's high in fiber it's got some vitamins and it supports a healthy microbiome which we will discover uh, um, go over in a later slide and digestion the endosperm is the carbohydrate portion and that an example of that is white rice um, and it's the, uh, it, the carbohydrate portion but also um, uh, doesn't have the fiber or uh, the vitamins. The germ portion has the vitamins. So a whole grain provides all the nutrients, the complex carbohydrates, dietary fiber, minerals, B vitamins. The B vitamins will help your body use the energy from nutrients and play a role in um, healthy nervous system. So look at your products that you're buying, like breads and pastas and breakfast cereals, and ensure that it does say 100% whole grain on the packaging. Uh, this slide also provides a list of examples of whole grain um, products. Uh, so I'll go over refined grains. So if you're buying products like white flour, white bread, and white rice, that means it's been processed and, and the brand and the germ portions have been removed. Um, usually it's for a better texture um, and helps with shelf life, but it takes away the fiber, the iron, and the B vitamins. So start incorporating whole grains as a healthy part of your um, a diet to reduce some of your cancers and other chronic diseases as well. And I say this in most pre presentations that I do, but when you go to the store, start challenging yourself um, to find some other products that you maybe usually wouldn't use, like buckwheat, like buckwheat pancakes um, this week to try out. Weight management. Uh, weight management, the 
leaner is definitely the better. The most, this is one of the most important lifestyle factors for um, uh, cancer prevention besides not smoking or tobacco uh, use. Um, the, the greater degree of body fat increases the risk of a lot of cancers. Um, so weight loss, big or small, can reduce cancers. This can be very difficult for people, but even the smallest amounts of weight loss can, um, can reduce cancer risk. Uh, the more overweight can cause insulin resistance, which can lead to promoting the growth of cancer cells. Also, that chronic low-grade inflammation that's there can also lead to free radical production, which damages cells, which leads to um, cancer development as well. For women, the excess body fat, specifically around the midsection, your waist, um, has increased um, risk for endometrial cancers and postmenopausal uh, post breast cancer. So making a healthy weight, a permanent lifestyle um, to support um, your anti-cancer anti prevention um, and find ways to reduce your barriers, create environments favorable to your new healthy choices. Um, would help. And the next slide will provide some, some tips. So what to do. So here's some starting point of tips as weight management is a topic that we could probably spend a whole full uh, uh, presentation on. So keeping a food diary to record the things that you eat so you are a little bit more mindful of uh, what's happening during your day. And sometimes you may notice patterns like, oh, at 12 o'clock, I, I seem to always be doing this or I ate right after this emotional thing happens. So sometimes it helps and also to show you throughout the day how many calories you're putting in, what choices you made. So I always usually recommend keeping a diary of your food choices, a support system, finding somebody to support your change in habits and tell them what kind of help that you want and you would need for them, uh, adding more vegetables, fruits, and unprocessed grain, uh, grains to your diet, finding ways to add vegetables to your meals, like in the morning, scrambled eggs uh, with green peppers or spinach, onions, mushrooms, adding broccoli or other uh, zucchini to pastas um, and uh, any vegetables to your pasta sauce just to make them a little bit more vegetable dense. I know veg adding vegetables is not um, usually the funnest thing or what people like, but what I used to do with my grandpa is kind of hide the vegetables in something because he was just not a, a big vegetable eater. So I found creative ways to implement them without them being um, over powerful in taste. And starting to reduce or avoid foods that can cause weight gain. So foods that are high in sugar, foods that are um, refined grains and fast food, processed foods. Uh, the purpose of eating a sugar um, or a carbohydrate source is to be using that as energy. So you're, if you're overloading your body with this type of sugars um, and not use, using it up, uh, then your body is going to store it. And what that storage is, is it, it stores as fat, okay? So um, start reducing these specific um, areas. If you notice that maybe you tend to go fast food a lot or you are eating a lot of processed foods, again, these are things to be mindful of and, and swapping them out, which I will give you some suggestions on the next slide. Okay, so we talked about adding vegetables to recipes and meals, even if it doesn't call for it, like tossing um, an extra vegetable um, anywhere you can would be helpful. So some things to swap, if you're a sweet person, then maybe swapping out um, some fruits for your dessert, um, water for any um, caloric beverages, which we will talk more about um, rethinking drink options, using pureed fruits in recipes, especially baking instead of butter and oils, using more spices and herbs um, instead of sugar and salt. So if you're typically a salt eater, then your, your, your taste palate has adapted to that flavor. So sometimes weaning yourself off of some salt, things will taste a little bit bland until those taste buds kind of come back um, um, come back to accepting the herbs and spices. That should be short term, so I don't want to discourage anybody who um, maybe realizes that if they reduce their salt intake. Um, changing white flour to whole grain flour. Really try to make half your plate vegetables, 
go easy on the sauces. Sauces can be something that maybe people don't realize, but they do add up. You dip it in here, you pour it on this. Um, so just be mindful of how much sauces, and they're usually fat-based, and um, which are higher in calories. Uh, use a non-stick skillet with a splash of oil, so you're not deep frying uh, your foods. And leave chips, cookies, desserts off your shopping list, because that will be your first test of willpower if you're in the store and you don't buy it. All right. So this slide gives you some visuals on how to be more um, in control of your portions too. So for example, uh, the tennis ball at the top is a representation of pasta. I don't know how many people usually use that amount. So this kind of gives you a good reference point of that should be your go-to for certain pieces so that you portion out foods a little bit uh, more appropriately if you're trying to lose weight. Um, some things that may help is using a smaller plate because if you're using a larger plate, you may feel the need to fill that plate, but the smaller plate will give a visual of more food and then using one serving at a time instead of going uh, filling your plate up at, all at once as well. Uh, something that you can do for meal prepping is portion out your, your meals ahead of time so that it's easier to just um, pull out a completely portioned um, meal uh, that you have prepped in advance. Okay, so physical activity. Inactivity can lead to weight gain. And as we just discussed, the weight gain, as we know, can lead to increased risk of cancer. So the, these recommendations are at least 150 minutes of moderate activity. So what is that? That's brisk walking, that's water aerobics, that's bike riding, that's dancing, which is my personal favorite, uh, going up and down the stairs, swimming, gardening. And so to break it down, if 150 minutes can be 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes, five days a week, 50 minutes, three days a week. Or if you're doing a higher intensity, then it's running, heavy yard work, hill hiking, not you know trail, trail walking, that would be more of your moderate. And then, or playing a sport like soccer. So that's 75 minutes a week. So that's about, if you do three days, 25 minutes of more high intensity um, uh, working out. Uh, two days a week should be some kind of uh, resistance uh, muscle strengthening activity. And trying to incorporate some kind of movement um, every day would be good too. So physical activity has the potential to reduce weight gain, maintain he a healthy levels of body fat, improve insulin levels, more rapid gut transit time, meaning things move through your body a little bit faster, which helps reduce um, the colon cells exposure to carcinogens, which are things that will cause cancer and improve immune function. Um, so because of the, the reduced um, exposure in the colon, it does reduce a risk of colon cancer, but also postmenopausal breast and endometrium cancer. So the big takeaway here is um, avoid sedentary behaviors, things like sitting, um, television watching, laying down for longer periods of time. And so some things to try is maybe using a phone tracker, a watch tracker, something that maybe alerts you if you've been sitting down um, a lot, walking on breaks instead of snacking, um, plan out a daily activity and say like, I'm gonna do this every day um, and try to get to it and get an exercise buddy. I have a um, a walk buddy at work, which helps and we, we, we feed off of each other for inspiration. Uh, use the stairs instead of elevators. Park further away so that gives you those extra steps. Drinks with sugar. So we're gonna start with the visual to give in, give you an idea of some of the drinks with sugar and then we'll go into a little bit more specifics with their um, risks. So coffee, unless you're really making it yourself, it usually is pretty calorie and sugar dense. So just be mindful um, of what's going in your morning lattes because um, that can be an easy source of uh, extra, extra calories for weight gain. Sodas um, are sugar dense. 
um, sugar sweetened teas, even 100% juice. There's a lot of um, natural sugar in that, sports drinks, energy drinks. So if you see that you are consuming some of these, maybe it's time to rethink your drinks and um, swap out with any of the examples that I have on the next slide. But just to kind of give you an idea that most of these drinks are at least 100 calories to 300 calories. And so to give you an idea that instead of drinking your calories, you can do like the same amount of calories in like vegetables and hummus, apple slices and peanut butter, um, hard boiled eggs, Greek yogurt, uh, bananas with the nut butter, uh, roasted chickpeas, just to give you some examples that you could be eating a little bit more, which would give you a little bit more of what we call satiety, that full feeling, instead of these sugars just going through your body and likely being stored as extra fat. Okay, so um, reduce sugar sweetened beverages, which can lead to weight gain by reducing um, the caloric intake. Hopefully that doesn't lead to extra weight gain, which would increase your um, risk of cancers. Drinking water or other unsweetened beverages is the recommendation. Um, adding naturally flavored waters, water with herbs. I personally love adding basil or rosemary or mint to my waters or fruits like strawberries and lemons are small amounts of juice just to give it a little bit of a flavor. Uh, inflammation from higher uh, circulation of glucose may support cancer growth. And uh, I will kind of talk a little bit about artificially sweetened drinks with artificial sweeteners. Like at this time, there's not a lot of strong um, data linked to weight gain or obesity and other health disease outcomes. I usually stick to more naturally flavored um, uh, drinks, like just mentioned. Um, just be, that's just my personal take. So just kind of be aware of how much on a daily basis maybe you are taking in from drinking your calories just to kind of be mindful and maybe seeing what you can do to reduce that or switch, start um, switching some of these options out. Alcohol. So for cancer prevention, recommendations are not to drink alcohol, but let's be realistic. <laughs> so they are linked to a certain amount of cancers, but if you are choosing to drink, then the recommendation is one drink a day for women or two drinks a day for men. It's the ethanol in um, alcohol, that's the carcinogen, and then it also converts to another carcinogen in the body. So it's damaging to DNA, which increases cancer risk, especially if you're a smoker too, the combination of those two increases your risk a lot more. So plant-based diet. So um, it's incorporating more plant-based foods. It's not, um, uh, the recommendation is not to just be on a plant-based diet. It's just incorporating more plant-based foods because it is associated with lower risks of cancers. It's rich in phytochemicals, what the phytochemical in a short definition, it's a compound in fruits and vegetables that help in cancer prevention. It provides vitamins and minerals that support antioxidant defense as well. So, so some um, ensure you're getting a variety, especially of plant-based proteins, which are beans, peas, and lentils, nuts, and seeds, um, soy products. Um, to meet your protein needs, uh, adding chickpeas or other beans to any kind of salads, packing nuts and seeds as a healthy snacks, taking your leftover veggies and turning it into like a tofu wrap for the next day, uh, veggies and hummus snack are so, some good options. Antioxidants. What is an antioxidant? It's basically... Um, Substances that may protect cells from damage caused by free radicals. What's a free radical? It's an unstable molecule in your body that can damage the cells. Um, we're exposed to free radicals from our environments like pollution, um, excessive sun exposure, cigarette smoke, alcohol, and, and healthy food choices. 
So antioxidants uh, mainly are found in very colorful fruits and vegetables. So that's, if you've heard the term like eat the rainbow, um, a variety of fruits and vegetables will give you a variety of antioxidants. Uh, the foods may have protective benefits ranging not only from cancer, but to wrinkles, your skin, and heart disease as well. So this is a list of some uh, antioxidant-rich foods, nuts, berries, broccoli, green tea, dark chocolate, tomatoes, citrus fruits, green leafy vegetables, flaxseed, curcum. At the end of this presentation, and um, I believe it's going to be provided through the chat, there's a shopping list guide that has basically pulled in all of the recommendations that I have in this presentation so that it's easier for you to um, see all of the food recommendations that you can take to the grocery store or plan out meals and it's in one place for you. So a consumption. So isoflavones in soy foods may not increase cancer risk and actually may lower it. Um, they may slow the growth of cancer cells. Um, I believe the hot topic in the last couple of years has been that it increases chance of breast cancer because of it mimics estrogen. But the high levels of estrogen that have been linked to increased breast cancer the food sources of soy have not been shown and linked to increase the risk of breast cancer. And actually it's showing that it may reduce the risk of cancers and it is recommended, uh, recommended um, at least one to two, two servings a day of whole soy foods, that's tofu, soy milk, edamame, or soy nuts. Red and processed meats. There's a lot of strong evidence with colon cancer, especially to reduce processed meats um, and red meats, um, processed meats, even um, the ones that are labeled low in nitrates or nitrate um, free processed meats may raise the number of carcinogens in the body. So avoiding foods that are preserved by smoking, curing, fermenting or salting um, or the additional chemical um, preservatives. Processed meats um, can also increase the risk of stomach cancer. Meat heme iron may damage the lining of the colon, which can contribute to colon cancer. So there's non-heme iron that comes from uh, plant sources. And just a side note, um, if you're using um, non-heme vegetable sources, get extra vitamin C so it's better absorbed. Uh, consume more, no more than 12 to 18 ounces of red meat a week is recommended. So here's some examples of red meat. So it's beef, lamb, and pork, and your processed meats are ham, bacon, uh, hot dogs, and pastrami, and salami. So gut microbiome. I am pretty excited about this one. Um, it's in it. It's an exciting, a new area of study. It's so much is still being discovered um, about it. So um, unhealthy microbiomes may lead to cancer. So what is a microbiome? It's the organisms in your body, which do so much for us. And I want to just give a special shout out to them and their efforts for keeping us healthy and safe. So let's talk about feeding them. <laughs> correctly and, and enriching um, uh, their, their property. So probiotics, probiotic rich foods, probiotics, not all bacteria are pathogenic and um, these ones are good and help repopulate good bacteria in your body. So yogurt, kimchi, kombucha, adding fermentable fibers. Uh, the fermentable fibers help gut bacteria to produce short chain fatty acids. These fatty acids seem to promote normal colon cell differentiation and have anti-inflammatory um, effects. So oats, barley, mushrooms, apples, pears, raisins, peaches, and plums. Prebiotic foods. So prebiotic promotes growth of gut uh, microbes that may offer protective effect, uh, effects in the colon. So think about like if you're feeding your bacteria. So garlic, bananas, uh, whole grains, lentils, beans, chickpeas, onions, garlic, leeks. Flavonoids are your antioxidants, and they um, 
are black tea, green tea, coffee, cocoa, uh, cruciferous vegetables, blueberries, um, and they help reduce inflammation and promote recovery from injury to the mucosal line, uh, wall. The prebiotics plus probiotics plus a high fiber plus flavonoids mm, may keep mucosal layers healthy and decrease inflammation. Dietary supplements. Uh, so what is recommended is obtaining your nutrients from whole foods versus dietary supplements is recommended and may be beneficial in effects against cancer. So dietary supplements associated with the increase of cancer risk, like beta carotene and vitamin E. So definitely um, I would be cautious or talk to your doctor if you're taking um, these two supplements. So there isn't strong evidence that dietary supplements protect against cancer. So we'll start um, with the behavior modifications to reduce cancer specific risk. So I'll go through a few of them. You'll start to notice some consistencies in uh, cancer recommendations like breast cancer, uh, high diet in fruits and vegetables, avoiding um, limiting alcohol, being physically active, maintaining a healthy weight, especially around the waist, colorectal cancer, high fruits and vegetables, specifically garlic was mentioned, more dietary fiber, whole grains, limiting um, processed and red meat, avoiding excess alcohol, checking your vitamin D levels, uh, and avoiding obesity. Lung cancer, um, again, fresh fruits and vegetables, a diet high in garlic, cruciferous vegetables, and that's your broccoli, your Brussels sprouts, your radishes, your cauliflower, kale, cabbage, arugula, uh, collard greens, uh, just to name a few. Uh, here are your antioxidants, your tea, soy foods, carotenoids, rich foods, curcumin, and quercetin. A uh, food tied in quercetin, is a, which is an antioxidant, is your citrus fruits, grapes, apples, onions, parsley, sage, onion, kale, broccoli. Limit phosphates. Phosphates is used in processed and fast foods. So check also labels when you're at the grocery store and make sure there's not a lot of added phosphates. Avoid high doses and supplementation of beta carotene and vitamin A, especially if you're a smoker. Endometrium cancer, eat more of a plant-based diet, uh, decreased red meat, saturated fats, and animal fats, and higher physical activity. Pancreatic cancer, impaired glucose control, avoiding high intake of processed meats and red meats. Prostate cancer, avoid high da um, dairy intake, or if you're on um, high calcium supplementation, uh, high fruits and vegetables, eating foods high in antioxidants, like tomatoes, cruciferous vegetables, soy, and legumes. All right, this is our last one for um, specific cancers. It's stomach cancer, avoiding high intake of salt and salt-preserved foods, um, eating at least five servings of fruits and vegetables a day, and garlic was also associated. So limit salt and use some alternatives like herbs, spices, garlic, or other lower sodium flavorings. So I hope too at the end of this pre presentation at least it came across fruits and vegetables because it seemed to be in almost every slide. Uh, so making healthy choices, what you can do today, these are the main takeaways, keeping a healthy way, increasing your daily physical activity, eat more whole grains, vegetables, fruits, legumes, and more plant-based options during week. Start to limit your fast food, your processed food, your uh, high fat starches and sugars, uh, red meats or processed meats, sugar sweetened drinks or high calorie um, drinks, and your alcohol. So here is some meal preparation tips. Um, having a balanced meal, incorporating a variety of fruits and vegetables and whole grains and proteins uh, when you're making your meals. Chop fresh fruit, uh, fresh produce in advance. So as soon as you get home from the store, kind of prepping it ahead of time um, so that it's easy um, to grab when you need a meal or a snack. Bake, grill, broil, or roast. So limiting your frying. 
um, shop with a plan. Prepare a list ahead of time, again, so that you have um, planned out meals, you know what you're going for, and that leaves, uh, that, that helps with avoiding extra things flying in your cart that you, you didn't need. Uh, and prep ahead. Portion out fruits and vegetables for quick snacks and meals. And don't go to the store hungry. <laughs> So here is a couple sections for uh, the grocery list that will be included um, just for you to be able to take with you or start planning out meals with um, the fruits, vegetables, proteins, and other items that have been recommended to help um, uh, with cancer reduction. your proteins, some whole grains, other items, and uh, and then at the end, it's, a, uh, it's what was recommended to reduce or avoid. And I just want to thank, again, everybody for attending today. Uh, I, I'm really excited about providing this to the community, and I hope somebody everybody took away at least something from it and starts their own journey um, on a healthier path. Thank you, Crystal. That was great. That was very, very informative. So I personally appreciated learning more about plant-based plant diets and um, some of the benefits there, and especially antioxidants, because you hear that term thrown around a lot, but mm -hmm. hearing you really define it and outline it for us, that was very, very helpful. And of course, um, less time on Netflix and more walk, more walking and more <laughs> exercising, right? We all have to move a little bit more. So, yeah. so we'll move on to the and next segment here. I know, what was that? I was thinking, if you are, like you find yourself wanting to watch that show, I mean, there's so many things that you can do in front of the TV if you have a stationary bike or a stair stepper or, you know, a little routine of like, I'm going to do five, uh, 10 to 15 sets of squats. Or, you know, if you're going to do these things, maybe, maybe have a plan of like, how can I still move mm -hmm. and do some of the things that would have been sedentary? Yes, absolutely. Good tip there. Um, so I'm going to head it off to our, um, our chat host, Jess. So Jessica is going to pop in. We had some questions come through. Some of you sent her um, direct message for some questions. So we will have her um, take it from here. And um, yeah, so let's move on to the next segment. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And thank you, Crystal. That was a wonderful presentation. We really appreciate your time. Um, so we did get some questions. First question being, um, why is there a difference in dietary fiber recommendations for men versus women? And is it based on gender differences or an assumption that maybe men could weigh more than women? Um, or is there just a def different reason? That is a great question. And I don't necessarily have an answer, but there's usually always specific differences because of our, how our body metabolizes things differently and how we utilize nutrients compared to men. For example, like uh, protein is usually a bit higher in men as well. Um, so I don't necessarily have a direct answer for that. It could just be the differences between um, the, the genders. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. that another follow-up question, and it may be the same answer, um, but also for the men and women for drinking alcohol, one for one drink per day for women, two for men, and they ask us if it's the same. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah it, it definitely could just be that our bodies are different. We have different hormones in our bodies that regulates, um, um, uh, metabolizes things a little bit differently. I can research and then provide some information back on those. Wonderful, thank you. And then another question. So. Can smoked meat increase cancer risk or should it be limited? Yes. So smoking meat, um, actually the smoke portion of it is um, the carcinogens. Um, so e example two, if you have burnt something and you know, probably we all have, so you're in your kitchen and you, 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 you burn something and you see the smoke, whenever you see the smoke or whenever you see the char, that char is the carcinogen. So by smoking this meat, you're basically taking that carcinogen smoky flavor and putting it back on the meat. So uh, yes, the answer is yes. 
Thank you for that. Um, so for veggie consumption, should we gravitate towards organic? And if so, how important is that or important yeah. at all? Yeah, yes, um, and it's definitely, it's definitely um, there's specific criteria that um, in order to be labeled organic, and it's definitely how um, the product was um, produced, and usually it's a reduction of like what kind of pesticides they, we do, um, they use, what kind of chemical treatments, but because of that reduction, and usually sometimes they're harmful, uh, products that you would consume like the skin on would be, would, I would recommend a little bit more organic. So say you're using a watermelon, I necessarily wouldn't choose the watermelon because it's encased. Um, but as far as like a zucchini, I would choose to use maybe like an organic um, zucchini because I would eat all of it. Great tip, thank you. Another question here. So they've heard that turmeric may help fight against cancer. Is it just a myth or are there actually benefits to the turmeric? So turmeric, it's the curcurum of turmeric that is the anti-cancer property. So yes, if you're eating turmeric, you're also getting that curcurum. And that's um, that's the part that is um, the anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer as well. So yes. Wonderful. Let's see here. So they're asking for an explanation on behavior to reduce prostate cancer regarding high dietary intake and calcium supplementation. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Um, so in an explanation of how to maybe reduce prostate cancer um, based on, is it like a high dietary intake or calcium supplementation that can aid in that? Yes. So it's the consumption. So so the high dairy consumption, which has the calcium and the which is the food base, and then the supplementation, it's the excessive amount that increases the risk. Um, I don't necessarily have an answer of like the metabolism of uh, of the, the the risk, but it is the risk of if you're taking too much, it le can lead to an increased risk of prostate cancer. Thank you. And then have collagen supplements and powders or L-glutamine glutamine supplements proved mm -hmm. harmful to breast cancer or colon cancer? Um, during the, what, the research that I did, I didn't see anything um, that brought up any specific information about collagen supplements or l -glutamine, so I just don't have um, that research to provide that answer for um, a yes or a no. And, so, okay. and then another question as well, can soy powder be used to replace soy food? Um, it depends on what kind of soy powder. Are they removing certain products from the soy powder, or is it just basically um, like a soy complete um, uh, powder as an additive? Um, I would still incorporate the whole food. It's usually the whole food product. Soy powder, I'm not sure what part of the whole soy has been removed, or if it's just like a soy protein powder. Um, that could be added to smoothies. Um, as well, I would say I don't, I'm not sure about the limitations of just having the powder, but the powder needs to be a little bit more, um, I need to need to know what kind of powder. So I think I just need a little bit more information <laughs> in there. Okay, sounds good. But on, so, honestly, uh, the, the food base of anything is usually always better because it, it, it provides a little bit more um, nutrients. Um, as well. Thank you. And we'll see if we have any follow up on that um, question there, and I'll let you know. Um, and then also being asked um, is the shopping list slide. So I will uh, make sure that you all get this information in the chat. Um, there is that portion of the slide in there for you to download if you'd like the PDF version or a Word doc version of that shopping list. Um, and then we'll also have a, the recording sent out as well. So you'll be sure to get that information. And then let's see, what are some healthy fats that we can use to replace unhealthy fats? Oh, great question. Um, so some healthy fats um, mainly come from plant-based sources except for your um, omega-3 fatty fishes. So um, healthy fats can come from like flaxseed oil, soy oil, um, chia seeds, uh, avocado, um, a whole avocado being used um, versus unhealthy fats. 
Mainly your unhealthy fats are considered saturated fats, which come from an animal product. So that's your butter, that's your um, the, the marbleized meat and fats. Yes, I know that's what makes it a little bit more peeling and juicy. Um, so if you're choosing to like uh, bring the flavor back to your meat with, with having a leaner meat, then you can use like marinades to make that more flavorful where you have a reduced uh, um, healthy fat pr um, portion. Perfect. Thank you. Let's see. Um, so for tea, is herbal tea okay? Um, they were wondering because that, that sugar slide for beverages. Yeah. Tea mentioned. Mm -hmm. So herbal tea is actually not a tea. In in definition, teas are actually just like um, green tea or black tea as a as a definition of tea being the plant. Herbal teas are definitely uh, herbal um, quote tea um, is definitely a good alternative like peppermint, ginger, chamomile, lavender. Yes, those are also great choices, which don't have any sugar, but add a, a, a flavor. And some of them have like calming benefits. And um, there's a great ginger turmeric tea that, you know, helps with um, stomach, upset stomachs and um, provides a little bit more of that um, turmeric cooker and um, antioxidant as well. Thank you. And then someone says, I love meat. Are the plant-based sub substitutes a good alternative or do they add too much salt and sugar to make it taste good? It, it could depend on the type of product you're, you're um, buying. You can kind of look at the ingredients um, and that may be difficult. Um, if you see a lot of words that you just don't understand, um, that might be an indication that maybe a little bit too processed. Um, I would have to kind of see the, the comparable product um, and see kind of what's in it, and which is which is hard if you do like meat and you're looking for that texture. Um, so if that that one's more. It depends on what product you're looking at. Some of them are highly processed. Like for example, um, vegan cheese is highly processed, it would not be something I recommend as an alternative, even though it's plant-based, um, as an example. Thank you. So the next question, so it prefaces with, I had estrogen positive breast cancer. I read some very credible resources that I should avoid estrogen, including plant estrogen. Why is there so much conflicting information on about the estrogen? So I would have to see what um, resources are basically saying that because the most evidence-based resources that and studies that have been found are are, are stating um, the opposite. So I would be curious if they wanted to send over the information be, um, and to investigate of where that information is coming from, what kind of studies it was um, being utilized. Uh, for that suggestion. Thank you for that. That was the last question that I did receive. Other than that, we have been receiving tons and tons of comments about how fantastic this talk was and thanking you for your time. So again, thank you, Crystal. Thank you, everybody. I'm glad I'm so I'm glad if it everybody found benefit in anything that was presented here. And thank you for the questions. They were great. Thank you everyone for joining today. And we will be sending out uh, for all participants today an evaluation form. And we would uh, truly appreciate and value your feedback um, on that. And then we'll also be emailing out a copy of this presentation like Jess mentioned earlier. So um, yeah, thank you both. And uh, we hope you have, and all who attended today, and we hope you have a wonderful week.